This no-call genius boost was a gift from Mark Brown at the Isle of Man meetup. He said that uh, he'd used it a few times and then it just stopped working. And some of the functions work, you can use the lights on it. Uh, but it's not putting anything out. It's going so, through the sort of motions and when you push this button in it kind of does stuff but it doesn't really do stuff. Yeah, it's, it's behaving very oddly. So let's take it to bits. Now, if I recall, NoCo seem to sort of, uh, they seem to present themselves as being one of the sort of higher quality brands. And most of the units uh, make sort of clicky relay noises. I have to say, this unit is not making clicky relay, relay noises. Um, I don't know if that's just because this is perhaps one of the smaller units. Apparently this can be used still as a power bank, which is what Mark was using it for. But uh, it just won't make any attempt to start cars at all. I wonder if that's just because something has failed or maybe it's been a... Uh... Well, I think these things, most of these ones have uh, lots of protection in them. So um, NOCO seem to take that quite seriously. They've got all the relays and stuff like that. So let's see, is this going to come apart? Have I got the screws out completely. Ooh, it's not easily coming apart. I think those screws are out. Yeah, they're all loose. Maybe it just needs levered. Where's my spudger? This is where I just poke the spudger right into a huge lithium pack inside. Oh, there we go, there we go. Okay. I'm not seeing a really, I'm seeing a, ooh. I'm seeing a slightly spongy lithium pack. Oh, that's interesting. I wonder if that's puffed up. It might just be the heat shrink, but we'll cut that open afterwards if needs be. Oh. Uh, I wonder what those wee prongs were. They're what actually holds these terminals in. Oh, that's a bit scary. I'll have to make sure I don't short this out accidentally. Um, oh, right. That might be the problem. Let's see if uh, you can actually see this. I'll zoom in it. This is cracked. This thing has seen a bit of current and the heat has actually caused diode failure. Okay, right, let's uh, zoom back out then and uh, investigate this. I'm going to be very careful about these leads because they just pop out apparently. I don't want to short them together because that would get very exciting very quickly. Oh, that's not actually fully popping out. That is quite scary. Uh, what about this one? Oh, do I really want to do this? Yes, I do really. Hold on, let's pull this one out while trying not to short it to the adjacent one. Is this the correct way to do this? It's probably not. This is probably going to end terribly. Oh, it's out. I think I might just wrap that in tape. I don't know if this thing's going back together again afterwards. Particularly if that pack is puffed up. That would be disappointing because I, I thought Noko was like, a, you know, a sort of prominent brand, unless this is an early model before they discovered that things happened. Because I don't see a relay in this. Uh, let's pull this out then. Actually, I should have pulled that out before I taped that up. That wasn't very clever, was it? Not to worry, I can just cover that, uncover that, slip the plastic off. It's got a little inline connector in there. Is that circuit board separate? Oh no, they've just jumbered it onto the board with that. Can I get this connector off? Let's uh Oh, that red is probably just coming straight from the battery. Okay, I'll just cover this momentarily to avoid any little explosions. Uh, is this going to come out? Oh, it's coming out. That's good. Or bad, depending on what happens. Oh, there's a bit of that. Oh, that, that's actually a bit of diode has just dropped off. I presume that's diode. That might not be diode. Oh, those might be MOSFETs. I'm looking at the connections now, and it's not just got the, them combed at the bottom. I think that's the output switching device. That would explain why it wasn't putting anything out. OK. 
Okay. Right. Uh, let's see if I can unplug the battery. And we'll investigate this a bit further. So that connection comes off. There's the battery's uh, balance connector. There's a little uh, temperature sensor on stuck in the side of the battery pack. Um, hold on, let's see if I can get this out now. Lots of opportunity for shorting things out here. Tell you what, I'll cover the. I'll use the tape and the black one now. I'll use a bit of fresh tape. That's better. Or I could just plug the positive and negative together. That would just not end well, would it? Deep down, you want me to do it. Deep down, I don't want to set fire to my workshop right now. Um, can I get that out? Let's. Uh, Nip that cable tie. Oh no, the cable tie isn't actually going to come out very easily. Oh, oh no, tell you what, I'm wrong. Look. Oh, this thing's well packed. Two boost converters, one for charging and one for discharging for the 5 volt output, and one for the 5 volt in to boost up to 12 volts, I'm guessing. Can this battery pack come off? Let's uh, get the little temperature sensor pulled off. Temperature sensor is now off. Lots of opportunity for this still to go up. Oh, it's got a bank of those uh, on the bottom. Oh, that's diodes this time. So that's the diodes on the bottom here. They've got three diodes with this all common along going through the diodes. And then they've got the switching device and the output, which looks as though it may have met its maker. I'm guessing if this one's blowing its lid, then it's most like the other ones uh, aren't going to switch the output as well. They've probably been nuked internally as well. Yeah, the case is cracked in that one as well. These, th these uh, components have had a bad time. Let's see what they are. BN431R. BN431R and the diodes are PFR is that an A? 40L45CT So what else have we got in this? we got the buttons which were kind of the one of the buttons, the power button was a bit shonky, it was playing up a wee bit Um. Is this optoisolators? Possibly coupling to this side, m monitoring the voltage on that side, perhaps. Um, lots and lots of chips. So I'm guessing these little ones are probably... boost converters. MP1584EN Oh god, everything, it's lots and lots of different chips What's the main processor? Holtec HT46R06 Now I have to say Even just sitting this thing seemed to self-discharge at a modest rate So I'm wondering if the battery has been nuked the only way we can find that out is to carefully probe into the battery. It feels puffy. I think this may have seen quite a high load, but then having said that, I think the MOSFETs kind of suggest it saw a high load as well. Um, I would have thought they'd normally go, uh, the, you know, they may have gone short circuit the MOSFETs and then ultimately gone open circuit with the sheer amount of current flowing through them. Oh yeah, that's puffed up. That is puffed up in there. It's not the usual flat lithium cell. This whole pack is puffed up. Yeah. So, let's uh, get this cover off completely. 
Not that I need to get the cover off completely, but you know, I'm just prone to doing stuff like this. I guess it's the same construction as the other pack that I blew up, where there was a very solid, it was like each pack, there were th three lithium batteries, which there are in this one to make up the 12 volts. And the other one that blew up, when I shorted it out to be fair, uh, it had the plates, instead of being wound uh, in the usual sort of lithium way, oh, that is that is most unsavoury looking, that is all puffy indeed, that, all the cells have really nuked in that, ooh, that's a bit scary. Scary, but also strangely pleasing in a sort of, ooh, it might go at any moment type of way. So yeah, this must be, uh, so he, here's the, uh, the USB charging port, and it comes in, and there's what appears to be a boost converter here that's going to step that up to about the 12 volts uh, as needed to actually charge the battery pack. And this one here is on the USB output, so it's taking that 12 volts and it's stepping it back down again for the 5 volts. Processor, few buttons, the main bank of diodes here, and then the MOSFETs in place of the relay. Now, this is the only um, NOCO pack I've come across with the uh, MOSFETs in it. Possibly this is why. Uh, the other ones all use the relay, and of course the modern packs, the, the sort of cheap, generic eBay packs, they all use the external module because it's the external modules. It's all the power switching component is the stuff that, uh, it's the stuff that's going to bite it. It's going to fail uh, most likely when um, an incident occurs. So in some of the NOCO packs, I think they have a separate module for that electronics with the relay for the high current stuff. But in the, of course, in the uh, external uh, power banks of the, the cheap eBay ones, you can physically unplug the whole module. It's all in a little dongle that just goes into the lithium pack, which kind of saves space and also uh, means that if the, you know, if it gets exposed to the point of it fails, but the battery pack's all right. In theoretically, you, you could get another high current dongle. I'm also looking at this over here and thinking that uh, little 6.8 micro Henry, indu Henry inductor is probably for the LEDs. I thought there were more LEDs than that, but there's just two on little uh, satellite printed circuit boards just poking up. It's interesting. It's dead, but um, it's quite in interesting anyway. It's that particularly uh, the way it's failed and physically cracked all its MOSFETs. First time I've seen the MOSFETs being used in, in what, an application like this. Possibly the last time we'll see them being used in an application like this too. But yes, uh, thanks, uh, Mark. That was uh, that was very interesting to take to bits. I was hoping it was going to be a simple fix, but uh, it's really not. It has been absolutely bluttered.